looks like it's going to be another beautiful Texas day. Just cruising down the road. Just cruising down the road. Entering into Castroville, established 1844. Need a little gas. And what the heck will we do without these self-pumping mechanisms on the nozzles? Makes it very convenient. It pumps it while you sit back and watch. I mean, I could easily reach my hand out and do the job myself, but you know, it, it's funner just to stand here. Grand total, 88 point, 88 dollars and pennies. I'm in the town square area now, and there are eight flags, very tattered flags in the park. I kind of wonder if at one point this was a fountain and not just a planter. And then over time, they just got rid of the water and put some foliage in it. And it also looks like someone has been using it as a golf driving range. It's a golf ball right there. That's a very impressive steeple on that church building. Since 1847, the town has held a tradition of St. Louis Day. And as best I can figure, this is a statue of St. Louis and they march out of the church and they use the entire courtyard for a big feast. The men smoke sausage and a pit barbecued beef. The women prepare potato salad, cabbage slaw, and desserts. Now that sounds like my kind of festivities. The only question is, how does this guy stay so thin That was pretty cool. The door was open. So I walked in there and just hung out in the pew for a while. Beautiful in there. Nice serene courtyard here on the side. The incredible thing is to think that the first congregation met there in 1870. It's amazing to think about generations past, way before we were even an inkling in existence. Our parents weren't even here grandparents. People were here, living their lives, enjoying life, and now they are part of history. We are creating history. What we do will one day be remembered. In the future, we, present day, our history. It's hard to wrap your head around, but it's true. If these walls could talk, I'm sure it could tell. A heck of a few good stories. Dan's Bar. And right down the road here is an old theater called The Rainbow. Looks to be an antique store now, but the sign is still there. The awning and the ticket booth. Even though there was a bunch of stuff out front, the door was locked. It wasn't open. I was hoping to get in and see maybe if the movie screen was still in there, but no such luck. In 1910, this brick building was constructed and this corner became very, very popular because this was where the town got its meat. If you were hungry and you wanted a steak, you would get your food here at the Hans Meat Market, signified 1910, on the top of the building. When I see homesteads like this that no one resides in anymore, you can't help think about the good times that were had here. In fact, there is a piano located on the porch. Probably quite a few throwdowns back in the day. You can just picture an old man with a pipe sitting in a rocking chair, enjoying the nice cool breeze. And now, this kitty is remembering. You remember, kitty? Remember the good old days. Never forget. Never forget. Oh my gosh, look at this relic pinned against the fence back there. Awesome. In 1868, the Sisters of the Divine Providence 
open this schoolhouse and the children in town gather here to do their learning, reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's now used as a meeting area, a sanctuary for a local church. The sign says, this is God's country. Please don't drive through it like hell. Oh my gosh, look at this old hotel. There's a value max there now. But you can see the old neon marquee, Hotel Armstrong. That means only one thing, I am in Hondo. And when I hear that name, I am always reminded of Married with Children. Al Bundy, his favorite movie was the John Wayne classic, Hondo, and he was never able to watch it. Something always happened when he wanted to see Hondo. I don't think it was based on this town, but, whoa. You have the right of way, Cap. Here in Hondo, cats have the right of way. Keep this in mind for future reference. If you're cruising down this road, might want to heed that warning. Might want to heed it. Construction on this church building started in 1853. About a decade later, they finished it up by adding some more of the rocks. I really do not know the reasoning on why it fell into deterioration like this, but it is pretty amazing looking. If you look very closely, on the side of the building is an engraving, probably with a date stamp or a name. Over time, the weather has worn it thin, as well as the letters D-O-M at the top portion of the entryway that's being held up now by two by fours. The interesting thing about this cemetery is that none of the graves are newer than 1893. Now you can find graveyards with plots dating back that far, but normally they progress and newer resting places are added. But not this one. The bunny rabbit over there startled me. You got me good, bunny. I thought you were a snake. In 1893, the town suffered a massive epidemic and they needed to build another graveyard, thus retiring this one. Next to this cross is a flagpole, but there's also this metal cylinder looking thing. What is this? What is that used for? I really like the fact that even though the headstones are dated 1846, there are still flowers here. People come out and pay their respects to the original town settlers. All these years later, their memory is still alive. I find old cemeteries very fascinating. I love history. And for a lot of people, this is the last memento or tidbit of their life that they can share with future generations and the world. Some people are not in the history books. Some people may be forgotten, but by seeing headstones and reading who they were and their names and the years they lived, a little bit of them will always live on. And the state of Texas obviously feels the same way. They erected this monument in 1936, dedicated to the former town of Dehanis. I think I'm the only one out here. The only one on this road. Just me and Large Marge. Well, I guess that makes two of us. Okay, there's two of us on this road. Not just one, but two. And that's how many it takes to tango. No traffic jams in this neck of the woods. Don't have to worry about bumper to bumper congestion. Beautiful landscape out this way though. Lots of cows. See all those cows? Lots of cows. What do you think's behind that big metal fence? Very heavily guarded. 
dinosaurs kept back there? Is that, is that the real Jurassic Park back in there? I am virtually out in the middle of nowhere driving down this very bumpy road. Not really sure where I'm going, to be honest. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, I'm seriously, where the heck, where the heck am I? For real, what are they keeping back there? I've wandered down a road of secrecy. Less traveled, yes, but also home to mysteries on either side. What's behind those fences? Whoa! We have some civilization, or at least what looks to be civilization, and a huge lake straight ahead. Some cliffs up there. This road was not made for an RV. Going straight down. It's been spray painted out. It says something not allowed on bridge. I'm doing it though. I'm doing it. I'm going over this thing. I made it to the top. Look at this. Water on one side, dry land on the other. That dog doesn't want me here. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. Oh, hello there, little baby. Hope you guys are having a good day. You following me? And this yard is like a boat full of Santa Claus dummies. Very random. Very random. And then there's a baby doll on top of a burned out airplane dangling from that tree limb. The entire property is just covered in weird stuff. I gotta be honest, I'm getting a very weird vibe about this little town I'm in. When I got to the top of the hill to overlook that lake, there was a guy looking out the window of his little two-story shack and he was kind of giving me the evil eye. That's when his dog start, started barking. And when I pulled over to get a view of that yard, the property owner was driving by and stopped, started to like walk towards the RV and I just kept driving. I don't think I'm supposed to be up here, maybe. The name of the town is Miko, M-I-C-O. And I'm fairly certain they don't get many out of town visitors up here. Gonna start heading back to San Antonio now. Have a very special announcement that I wanna tell you about. This Sunday, February 5th at 2 p.m. sharp, I will be doing a meetup right here next to these boots. I'm not sure if they were saying hi or if they were just excited about the boots. We will be congregating at a store inside the North Star Mall. I know you're not paying attention to where it says North and Star. You just can't keep your eyes off Texas's largest boots. I guess the real question is, are you going to be there? There's no reason to bring anything except yourselves. Whoa, that was very close. That guy almost got in a wreck. This is a pretty big place, so I need to tell you the specific location of where we're going to hang out. The name of the place that is gracious to host this event is called Think Geek. And it's on level B, which would be right next to the food court. Right here. I meant to say section B, but it is on level two. Once you're on the top level, in the midst of all the eating establishments, just look across the way there, and there it is. Think Geek. Just keep a keen eye out for this guy, because he's probably gonna be looming around. From the bottom floor, past Hellsburg Diamonds, go up the escalator, and it's right next to the Dallas Cowboy Shop. Parking at the mall is free, and obviously admission in the store is free, so all you have to do is just bring yourself Maybe your camera if you want to get some pictures and just show up. It'll be fun. This is something I never knew existed. A Back to the Future book decorated like the hoverboard in 2015. It's like a notebook. It's like a diary. I hope to see you here this Sunday, February 5th, 2 p.m. at the North Star Mall, the second floor at Think Geek. I'll be here. 
Will you? Vlog over.